Hi, Dr. Kevin Windish from Sparks Pediatric and Adolescent Medicine here. Welcome to our video series for parents. Please remember these videos are not intended to replace visits with your regular physician. If you have questions, we're happy to see you here in our office, 775-359-7111. We'll get you in the same day, but we really can't help you over the internet or via video or via telephone. Today what we want to talk about is iron deficiency anemia, what it is and its implications for children and, and, and where it comes from. Um, and of all the anemias for young children, one, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, iron deficiency represents 99% of the anemia we see. So it's important to recognize the disease itself and, and, and why. Uh, so we'll start with what is anemia. Red blood cells are like little boxcars, and their job is to pick up oxygen and deliver it from the lungs to the brain, the kidneys, the heart, and anywhere else it needs to go. When you have anemia, the, you, you don't have enough boxcars. Now, that can be because you don't have enough boxcar room. Now, it can be because you don't have enough boxcars, so you don't have enough red blood cells, or because the red blood cells are too small, or because the red blood cells uh, are not full of the carrying molecule known as hemoglobin. And depending on which of those things is happening is the specific disease the, and specific type of anemia that we're dealing with. And that's kind of what we sift through when we say there's multiple causes of anemia. Why do we care? Well, for children, this is a little bit different in adults, but for children, if they're chronically anemic, not getting enough oxygen to the brain in particular uh, affects their ability to learn and can result in permanent learning disability that does not reverse when the anemia is reversed. It can result in uh, mental retardation, can result in poor growth, and for a variety of reasons it actually sets you up for lead toxicity because your body in a desperate attempt to pick up extra iron will also pick up extra lead. And so if you're exposed to small amounts of lead uh, in your environment and you're iron deficient anemic, you actually then become lead intoxicated. And lead intoxication causes a superimposed lead anemia on top of the iron deficiency anemia, so it can make things even worse. And causes its own brain damage and its own learning disability. Uh, so again, making things worse, so it's a, a bad issue. Where does the iron deficiency anemia come from? What drives it? Well, in, in young children, which is really what I want to center on today, because this is most of the anemia we treat in pediatrics, uh, it really is coming from uh, too much cow's milk in the diet. The calcium in the cow's milk competes with iron for absorption, and cow's milk is iron-free, and if kids are drinking too much cow's milk, then they're not eating other foods that have iron in it and they can become severely iron deficient anemic. I have seen children so iron deficient anemic they've required multiple transfusions in order to get their hemoglobin up to a safe level. And I have personally seen five children who've gone into high output heart failure as a result of their severe anemia driven 100% from excessive cow's milk intake. Now as you look at my face, you realize I'm not that old. I haven't been in practice all that long. And I work in uh, a suburban setting, not, not in the inner city of, you know, the poorest cities in the, the country. And yet I've seen five children in high output heart failure from too much cow's milk. It's not rare. So how do we test for anemia? Well, it's a very simple blood test. We draw a hemoglobin, part of a complete blood count. And you have hours ba answers back in an hour. We can do a, a finger prick in the office and um, run it on what's called a hemoglobinometer. But that gives me only limited information, and although it'll tell me if you're anemic, it won't tell me why you're anemic. The complete blood count helps me to know exactly why, helps me to know why you're anemic, although it may not give me the exact diagnosis. It'll point me in the right direction. Is this from iron deficiency? Is this a vitamin deficiency? Is this a, a genetic disorder? And then I can start to, to work all of that up with additional tests. Um, in the case of iron deficiency anemia, it's easy to treat. We treat it with iron, and um, it's over-the-counter. We have to be careful. There's multiple types of iron available over-the-counter. 
and we need to make sure, and they're different concentrations by iron, we need to make sure that the patient's getting what I think they're getting so that they get the right volume of liquid. It's best if it's suspended inside of orange juice because the acid in the orange juice, the ascorbic acid, helps to increase absorption of the iron from the gut. And then we just check the iron levels and make sure that they're rebounding. Um, and if they are, we keep you on the iron on replacement doses until you've not only replaced the hemoglobin, but iron stores. And when those have been replaced, then we drop you down to just a maintenance dose of iron every day. And we leave you there through childhood. Uh, iron does have side effects. You have to be careful with it. Too much iron can be constipating, not the end of the world, but it's annoying. Iron overdose, if children get into a bottle of iron tablets or a bottle of iron supplement, results in pancreatic failure, heart attack, um, liver failure, and in particular, liver failure tends to get people, actually can result in um, intestinal failure as well. But the liver failure can be fatal. Uh, so we have to be careful not to both uh, accidentally overdose you or chronically overdose you. So we need to follow your levels very closely and be very careful with this medicine, keep it locked up and out of reach of children except when you're dosing them. So I hope that this answers your questions about iron deficiency anemia and really is what you're interested in in anemia. We can talk more in later videos about some of the other causes of anemia that are much less common, but definitely very real and definitely out there. This is Dr. Kevin M. Windish. I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, we can see you here in the office. If we can help you, give us a call at 775-359-7111. We'll see you next time.